forgiveness of others and ourselves. What I find to be the most powerful tool for forgiveness is the awareness that without it, that which you want most in the world is out of your reach. You cannot simultaneously be holding a grudge and be living in light and love and spiritual wisdom. They cannot coexist. And so the minute that you decide that peace, that love, that awakening is more important to me than the grudge, than how that person hurt me, it slips off automatically because you realize that holding on to it is hurting yourself. And so you do, you know that person hurt you. But now you do whatever you can do to heal as quickly as you possibly can. And so that's the greatest way to forgive. And we practice compassion. And it doesn't mean by any means that what people do is right. In many cases, what they do is wrong. To cheat is wrong, to betray is wrong, to lie is wrong, to steal is wrong, to abandon is wrong, to harm is wrong, to abuse is wrong. We know it's wrong. But we practice compassion because what we know is that those who were harming us were doing it because that was all they had. If I'm sharing pain, I'm sharing it because that's all I have. We can only share what we have. If I live in joy, I can share joy. If I live in love, I can share love. If I live in misery, that is all I can share. And so we realize that if somebody has brought pain into my life, it's because that's all they have. And in terms of ourselves, we forgive for the same reason. Number one, because not forgiving is holding us back. Number two, because we realize that at that time, like everybody else, I was doing, doing the best that I could with the toolbox that I had at that moment in my life. And where the universe needed patience and compassion or skill from me. I didn't have it at that time. What I had was impatience and fear and anger. So I used those. We let it go. But we let it go with the clarity that I'm going to make sure my toolbox is full next time. Because there's going to be another time, another situation when the universe wants that from me again. And I was, I was unprepared the first time. So I acted unskillfully, hurt myself, hurt others. But I'm going to be sure to be prepared next time. If it turns out I didn't have patience last time, I'm going to cultivate it now. I didn't have understanding, I'm going to cultivate it now. I didn't have perseverance, I'm going to cultivate it now. And that's how we grow. But shame and guilt don't help us grow. They thwart our growth. So we let them go. And Ganga is the exact right place to do it. Give it to Ganga. That was Pooja Swamiji's beautiful teaching to me. Instruction, rather, not not a teaching, it was an instruction. Just give it to Ganga. The pain, the anger, the story, give it all, just give it to Ganga. I have moments come sometimes in my own life where something will arise 
And I'll say to myself, my God, I thought we were done. Like, I haven't seen you in so long. Wow. Okay. Guess we're not fully done yet. (laughs) And that's all you can do. Like, years ago, the last time I dealt with that, I thought I had fully moved through it. And if you had asked me a week ago, I would have said, yeah, done with it. But then this situation arose and you realize, oh, I guess not quite so done yet. Another layer. Another layer to peel back. And so we just move through our lives peeling back these layers, but not feeling shameful about them, not feeling embarrassed by them, but realizing that each of them is taking us deeper and deeper into the truth of who we are. They're gifts. Because there are avenues into a depth of ourself. If nothing ever triggered us, if you lived somewhere where the rain never fell, you would never learn how to be the best carpenter in the world. You could be the sloppiest carpenter in the world and it wouldn't matter. But that's not the point of life. So it's not about... How can I create a world in which nobody ever triggers me, nothing ever happens that pushes my buttons, nothing ever brings up anything for me? That's like saying, forget it, I'm too lazy to learn to be a good carpenter. I'm going to move somewhere it never rains. No. Stay where you are, where it rains. But learn to be a good carpenter. Learn to patch up those holes. And that's what the rain teaches us. And so when something happens and it triggers us, and there you realize, oh yeah, there it is again. That's an avenue. It's an avenue deeper into yourself. Use it. Don't berate yourself. Don't feel shame. Don't feel guilt. Don't feel anything. I'm fascinated by it when it happens. I've got this great fascination for the workings of my own psyche. Really, and it's like, wow, that's so interesting. Okay, here we are. Hadn't expected to spend the day with anger, but here we are. You know, it's like a, in India, we say atiti deva bhava. It's like the guest is God. You are not allowed to slam your door. You, you didn't want to see that guy? Too bad, he's shown up on your doorstep. You've got to let him in and give him a cup of tea. Same thing. It's like, all right, wasn't planning on spending the morning with anger, but there he arrived on my doorstep. Okay, let's give him his cup of tea and hope he'll be on his way sometime soon. (laughs) Right? I'm not going to roll out a futon for him. I don't want him to stay the night. But I'm also not going to scream and yell and throw a temper tantrum on the doorstep because he's shown up. All right, okay. Here you are. Not what I expected, not what I planned. And and then you figure out, okay, what do I need to do in the future to prevent him from coming? Like, why did he show up today? What happened yesterday or last night or this morning? Due to which suddenly out of the blue after such a long time, totally unexpectedly anger showed up. What happened? And it could be something as minor as, I didn't get enough sleep. I stayed up too late. Cranky when I'm tired. Could be any one of dozens of things from the most superficial physical level. Had too much sugar. Dinner last night threw off all my blood chemistry. Woke up in a cranky mood this morning. And it could be something much deeper. But you look at it. Without shame, without judgment, with fascination. And then learning for next time, how do we not have that happen? How do we keep anger off our doorstep?